welcome everybody. This is the Heartache Counselor Podcast coming to you from Flyover Country. Just a country psychiatrist out here doing the Lord's work, classically trained in the tradition of the great physician. I'm your host, Marty Carpenter, psychiatrist, and I am here today to talk about being right or happy. It's a, I love this saying. It's one of my favorites. It's um, we've got a battleground in this country. We got we got a line in the sand running through our homes. We've got the battle of the sexes. We've got power and control issues. We've got a push pull. We've got anything and everything being used as a pawn against the other one. And everybody's trying to be right, thinking it's going to make them happy. Have you guys ever seen, uh, you, you probably haven't, nobody nobody watches old movies anymore. Most people don't. I like um, um, Shakespeare. Now, Shakespeare's hard to read for me. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I can sit down with Shakespeare and just tear through it, like Grisham or something. I cannot. I take my time. I look up words. I open a glossary. Remember that term? Glossary. And uh, I, I have a good time with it. You know, this guy is hilarious, really. And he's also an astute observer of humanity. One of the best. And he's got one called The Taming of the Shrew, right? And you guys know what this one is about. The, the shrew refers to... Now look, okay, I understand we've got some serious issues with sexual abuse in this country culture and, and sexism and, and gender discrimination problems. I understand all that. And none of, none of this discussion is meant to, um, to, to suggest in any way that, uh, n- that, that the women don't have uh, a legitimate point on this stuff. But anyway, he, he takes a character, a female character, uh, and paints her out as this shrew, shrew meaning, just meaner than hell. Just everything she says is a cutting, biting remark. Uh, she would sooner hit you over the head with a loot <laughs> or a three-legged bar stool than uh, give you a smile or a cold glass of water. She is meaner than snot. And there's this father, and he's got two daughters, and this the shrew is one of them. Her name is Catherine. And he's got another daughter, though, uh, and her name's Bianca. Now, Bianca is the the nice, cute one. And Catherine's kind of, not that she's not uh, pretty. I mean, she's certainly portrayed to be pretty in this movie, The Taming of the Shrew, I was watching last night with Elizabeth Taylor, who played the shrew. But anyway, Bianca is characterized, uh, characterizes the, you know, sort of the ideal woman of the time, perhaps. She's, you know, demure and deferring and lovely and dainty and and all of her suitors uh stumble all over themselves trying to get to her and and uh she just sort of rolls her eyes and you know waits for waits for prince charming to come along and sweep her off her feet meanwhile her sister catherine is um everybody who comes her way she basically throws a beer bottle at them <laughs> She's just not having any of it. And dad is in, in, he's trying to get him married off. His name's like Baptiste or something, whatever. But dad's trying to get him married off, but he can't get anybody's, uh, anybody to pay any attention to Catherine because Bianca is always drawing all the attention from the suitors. So he puts Bianca in the house, has some people come in to homeschool her. Uh, and the people he brings into homeschooler are really just suitors dressed up as schoolmasters, still trying to woo her. And so that leaves some room then for Catherine to be courted. And so why would anybody want to deal with this? Well, the dad is rich, okay? Uh, her dowry is large. He, own lo- he owns lots of land. And so um, one of the the suitors of Bianca hatches this plan, or a couple of them do. They're going to find a suitor for Catherine, which is going to get Catherine married off and free up Bianca um, for their pursuits. And so they get this old, just 
rough dude. He's just he's just as mean as the shrew. You know, he's kind of like your classic barroom brawler. Um, I don't know. He's got a little bit of gentleman in him, not much. Uh, and he he and the shrew are just a perfect match for one another. And then it proceeds, you know, he finds out she's rich and he goes for it. And basically then it's just a competition to see who could be um, dominant, to see whose will will overpower the other. Will he tame the shrew or will she run him off is kind of the question. And, you know, spoiler spoiler alert. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how this ends, uh, it, but it's worth watching. You know, I, I was talking about old movies. I, I fired up a 1967 version of this movie uh, to help me get a handle on the characters and the plot. Um, and uh, The Shrew is played by Elizabeth Taylor. And the guy who, t- who tames The Shrew, Petruchio, is played by Richard Burton when they were both in their heyday. They look like they're in their... You know, maybe their 20s or possibly their 30s. And, uh, you know, since then, I don't know, Elizabeth Taylor was married like seven times or something. So I don't know if she's a shrew in real life, um, but she's I'm sure I'm sure she's had her go arounds with men <laughs> in terms of the power, power struggles. As have I not with men, but I've had the power struggles uh, in the house. And I'm familiar with that dynamic. And I also work in mental health and I just sit and observe this dynamic all day long. And it plays it, it plays itself out in any number of ways. And I'm just, we're going to kind of dissect this a little bit, but let's talk about being right versus being happy. It's kind of a a false dichotomy. It's meant to, to be a a kind of a jarring statement and make a point. You know, the, the idea is that if you work so hard to be right in an argument, it doesn't allow for happiness. If you really want to be happy, stop trying to be right. And we're brainwashed, man, from the day we are born to attempt to be right in basically everything we do. I mean, it's all over uh, the TV and it's it's all over our culture. I mean, it's, it's about uh, winning. Um, we, you know, we have sports and competition, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it, that's about winning. Our politics is about winning. You turn on the news. It's sort of like who can debate the best and shout the other one down. Um, there of course are just numerous examples in the media of the battle of the sexes in our, in our homes. And that's playing itself out, uh, also on a national scale. And, um, it's uh it's problematic because the minute you be- you begin to try and be right you instantly take this person who is your romantic partner let's say uh if you're talking about a, a couple you know you take this person who's your partner who who you're supposed to be loving and cherishing having and holding till death do you part and then, and then you be, they become an adversary. You turn them into an opponent, and then it instantly becomes a competition. And it's impossible to stay soft and accepting and forgiving and loving and, and all of that with your opponent, because that's not the point. You're trying to win. And... It's destructive and the kids watch it and then and then the kids get in the mix and, and we start using the kids as pawns and uh, we have tactics. We have uh, starving each other for affection. We have we have leaving each other alone with with the work and the responsibilities. We have accusing uh, the other one of, um, you know, not doing their part. And uh, we have you can use money, you can use sex. You can use screaming, fighting, drinking. You can use all kinds of weapons uh, uh, to to be right. About what, though? I mean, what are we really trying to be right about? Is it about what it's about? I mean, it's like uh, the, it's like the shrew uh, didn't know what she was even fighting for i mean she was just fighting period something happened to her along the way evidently that uh left her in a perpetual state of rage and and we've all got this like inner shrew 
and we've got to be our own shrew tamers. That's that's kind of the tie in here, is that she she is not an isolated incident. She represents our ego, and 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 he too. I mean, he's he's in it for the money, uh, not for love, and and she's in it for. They're both in it for power, control, money, and and prestige, and whatever these sort of ulterior motives are that that each one of them have. But they do. They represent our inner ego and our our fight for dominance and why do we fight so hard i mean i I remember back when when my marriage you know you know was not doing uh, so hot and it seemed like you know when you get to this place of frustration and you really don't know what to do anymore you don't know how to improve your marriage and you're you're at loggerheads and you're at a stalemate and everything's a fight and it feels like if you give an inch if you soften yourself even a little then that that person is going to take whatever ground you've given them and use it against you in some way if i tell her i'm sorry uh, that's going to put me in the bad guy role uh, perhaps permanently i'm already fighting to not be in this bad guy role and I'm, I'm constantly pointing out how the other person is is a just as much if not a bigger bad guy than i am and it gets into this, you know, scorekeeping and finger pointing. Well, I, I earn all the money. Yeah. Well, I did all the, I do all the dishes. Yeah. Well, you know, I take care of the yard. Yeah. Well, I do the laundry. Yeah. Well, I have to go deal with these a holes at work. Yeah. Well, I have to, you know, balance all of the books and try to make ends meet after you blow all your money on your your stupid motorcycle or whatever it is that you're in love with you know it just it's just this uh here's all the ways you suck more than me and and that's pretty much um the posture that we have and i work with couples all the time and they come in and they're like he's doing this and it's going to ruin our marriage tell him he's wrong and then he basically says oh yeah well i'm doing this because she does that and that's ruining our marriage. Tell her she's wrong. And I'm like, I'm like, look, look, guys, I'm I'm here to to highlight for you some areas. I'm I'm here to help you discuss creative ways to solve your problems. And and I always make it a point to um, establish that I am a neutral figure in any conflict. I am not there to take sides. Um, I'm there to sort of uh, treat everyone with with respect and assume that everyone has a point, and that and that's true. And this is why it sometimes gets really confusing, is because um, oftentimes in in marital conflict and relational conflict, both sides do in fact have a point. Uh, and if we, but we then deliver our point in such a way. Uh, with the screaming and yelling and shouting or the passive aggression and, and stonewalling or whatever unhealthy way we're doing it. And then the the fight then becomes about that tactic instead of the issue at hand. It may, it's true that, that maybe um, that, that mom is like totally overwhelmed and tired of kids and hasn't had an adult conversation in weeks. And um, it's really tough to try and balance the budget and, um, you know, make ends meet and keep food on the table. And it's true that the guys like, you know, I'm super tired when I come home from work, works really hard. There are some people who at work who are very difficult. Um, I don't, you know, whatever it is. I mean, but we come home and we try to forcefully exert our will about our position. And then the other person just goes, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to, to give an inch and I'm not going to be compassionate because you're being, you're being mean. You're you're yelling. You're being passive aggressive. You're you're attempting to make your point in a way that that um, I simply can't hear or won't hear because I feel attacked. I feel that I am uh, your opponent in this situation. Contrasted with um, the ideal, in my view, which would be I am your team mate. I am, I am here to take a look at these complex problems that we have as a couple and work with you on creative solutions 
owning my part, uh, forgiving you for your part, extending uh, grace, uh, and and working, like I say, working together uh, as a team uh, towards a common goal. And do we have a common goal in many of our marriages? I mean, I think about this. It's like businesses, for instance, will have a mission statement. They'll have something that they're basing their company around, hopefully, that, that is an ideal of theirs. And it's pretty simple. It's not, it's not wildly complex. It's, you know, this is what we believe. This is how we're going to address it as a company and, and make the world a better place, ideally. And, and marriages c- could have the same thing. You know, you could, you could take a look at, at, at your, your marriage and say, what do we want this thing to be about here? What are we? Are we, um, are we about living paycheck to paycheck and um, partying on the weekends? Um, are we about the biggest house we can afford? Are we about as many vacations as we could possibly take? Uh, what are we about? Or are we about raising healthy children? Are we about growing as individuals so that we make better partners? Are we about working together on some common goal that makes the world a better place? Uh, what, what is it that we're about? And of course, in the way that I stated that, I'm, I'm giving the impression that I have an opinion on what the, what the proper thing is. And I honestly do. I do. Right? Now, on one hand, whatever's working for you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you guys are like in a marriage and your goal is the, the, a, a giant house, fabulous vacations, uh, $750,000 RV and a front row uh, seat at uh, every football game for your tailgating, then great. If that's working for you and you can, can sort of come around that and, and gather around that issue collectively – uh, and you find joy in it and, and peace in it, and it's, and it's really doing it for you, then, then, then really, I'm serious, fabulous. Because I honestly can't tell uh, what is best for anybody. I can simply shine a light on what I see work over time. Maybe you're the light of the tailgating community. Maybe when you roll in, uh, you, you begin to gather a community around you, and, and people find peace from your existence and, and you really uh, bring joy into people's lives and, and you you build community around yourself in a way that makes the world a better place. I don't know. I really don't. So I'm, I'm not judging. But, but what I'm saying is that generally speaking, when people take their, take the life that they're giving and they, that they're given and they point it towards something external that they conceive of as the highest good that they can imagine, things go way better. (laughs) They just seem to go way better. And why is that? I mean, it's because that that's what it really takes to tame this inner shrew. It's, it's when you begin to look outward and see areas where you can have an impact for good uh, the shrew's voice gets quieter on the inside and your, your spirit rises up inside of you and begins to inform your actions, uh, as opposed to getting all that you can in a moment in the form of a victory in a fight or a material or, uh, or whatever it is. So would you rather be right or happy? Right is a fight. And when you're happy, you take a nappy. That's how I like to think about it. So what what can we do? What are some what are some tips on how to address this? Here's the thing you you already know. You already know what you can do. And there are times in your marriage, likely for the average couple where it it's really pretty, pretty darn good. And you are focused on something, uh, that, that is a greater good perhaps. And you're working together as a team. It's not that we're always failing or always succeeding. That's not the case. It's, it's better thought of on a spectrum, you know, like our marriage could be a 10, which is ideal, but that's, you know, that's unrealistic. 
Um, we'd really like to be at an eight or a seven, a good portion of the time. We've been hovering lately around a two or a four. We can remember days of, of sixes and sevens, and we'd like to get back there. And so you kind of think about, well, what were we doing then that, that allowed us to sustain uh, a seven or an eight? And what are we doing now or not doing now that's different? than that time. And, and you begin to imagine um, the little things. It's subtle things. It's, it's, it could be as simple as when, when he comes home from work or she comes home from work and I'm already there, I stop what I'm doing, look my partner in the eye and have a five-minute conversation. Simple as that. Just Just whatever it is. Maybe I put down uh, my hobby or my tools or, or, you know, the phone or whatever it is. And I look them right in the eye and, and just, and just have a conversation about their day. That, that, that's what I mean. It's, it's not always this, you know, we need to go to therapy and, and do, you know, 50 sessions and scrape and claw. I mean, sometimes you got to really dig deep and find the answers to these, but truthfully, a lot of the time, um, there's some really good people that are just stuck in some patterns and, and just, just doing things a little bit differently can, can make all the difference. And, and, and when you begin to do things even a little bit differently, let's say you come home and, and you feel heard, uh, when you get home from work and, and you feel like you're, you're, uh, on the same team and it was only 10 minutes, right? Where you connected and you gave this person the benefit of the doubt, you know, you assumed the best about them then everything else at night has the potential to go very differently. Your interactions with your kids. Uh, I notice it with my kids. Man, when I am in a bad mood or I feel like I'm beaten down or I'm too tired or whatever, my kids talk back more. They bicker more. When I'm in a good mood and positive things are coming out of my mouth and I'm interested in them and their experience and finding out what's important to them and my spouse and and everything then everybody starts talking nice to each other we as parents are leaders of these households and and the kids follow our lead in many ways and so it starts at the top i mean the buck stops with us it's how we are talking to each other is how our kids are going to talk to each other and us I mean, our kids run their yaps and they're smart with us and they talk back and we wonder why. Well, that's how we talk to our spouse. <laughs> I mean, that's where are they learning this? I mean, of course, there's the media and there's school and everything, but our kids are learning a good deal of their behavior patterns from us. The, the things that our kids do that annoy us often are, are exactly things that they've picked up from us. And so relating to one another differently. And, and I want to give you hope. You guys already know how to solve a lot of these problems. If I said to you, hey, what, what are, what's one or two things today you could do differently in your marriage or your, in your relationship that would give you a shot to, to be less right and more happy, to, to be more focused on um, forgiveness and peace as opposed to drawing a line in the sand and daring someone to cross it. I mean, what are a few things that you can do? You know, uh, it's time together. It's a commitment to a common purpose. It's stopping to be thankful. It's going out on, on a, for dinner, maybe getting all gussied up or, or going, going to a show, um, maybe a, a play or a symphony or, or a movie or, or whatever it is. And, and it's doing those things with regularity and it's inviting God into your marriage. I, I genuinely believe that. I mean, God is the king of not being right. And let me, let me tell you what I mean by that. God, it, it, this pisses us off about God because he's not invested in being right in our lives as much as he is in allowing us to transform gradually over time and we look up and we're like how can you let this go on how can you i'm 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 doing everything right right how can you let this suffering uh in my life go on why don't you act definitively 
Why don't you show yourself in a way that proves your existence, gives me what I want, establishes my opinion as the right one? Why don't you do that? And we're, we're all doing that. It's like, I can't believe in, in a God. Why doesn't he just, you know, show us uh, exactly what we want to see and then um, everything will be okay. Or, or Jesus, you know, it's like they were, they were mocking him. They were saying like, hey, um, if you're so hot, why don't you come right down off that cross? Because you say you're God and the angels will save you and you're going to strike us all with lightning. Nah, 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 nah. Why don't you do that? Well, he didn't need to be right. He didn't. He needed to fulfill his purpose. Uh, and that's and that's true of us, too. We, do, we just need to stop trying so hard to be right and work on fulfilling our purpose and spend some time finding out what that is in the form of reflection, meditation, reading, self-exploration, uh, spiritual practices and such. I mean, that's, that's how you find this stuff out. So... Tame your little uh, shrew there. And by uh, by sh- tame the shrew, I mean the one in here, not the one across the dinner table from you. Stop taming that shrew. Stop trying to make them different. You can't. You're not With your attempts uh, to control them, you're only going to cause them to dig in deeper. Their foxhole, their trench on the other side of this line in the sand is just going to keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper somebody has got to lay down their arms somebody has got to bend their sword into a plowshare for god's sake somebody's got to go first and stick to a posture of humility and and uh, reconciliation somebody's got to do that so hey that about wraps it up um later this week we're going to have janice back on i think this thursday um, we'll see what I come up with for tomorrow. Uh, might, we might have to stick with this whole writer happy thing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I usually just, you know, lay in bed at night and, uh, kind of just see what percolates up into my consciousness or, you know, when I'm in the shower, you know, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I just, I just listen to my inner voice and these, these are the things that are on my mind, uh, from, from my work and from my personal life and some of the experiences I've had, uh, in my lifetime. And that's why I'm talking about them. So thanks for listening. Uh, if you feel so moved consider donating, uh, or, or subs- uh, providing some kind of an offering on the uh, Patreon account. I'm, I'm in continual, uh, learning and understanding about this Patreon account. Um, I'm not quite exactly sure uh, how it all works and, and I'm still getting it figured out, but there are ways on there to become a supporter of this podcast and, and, and help this mission move forward. And, and I'm hoping that over time, whatever this is becomes uh, something bigger. And um, like I said, uh, when I was talking to Janice the other day, you know, we're working on uh, a marriage retreat coming up. And, and if that goes well, we might begin to do that sort of thing on a more regular basis. Uh, we may, uh, at some point begin to try and put together materials um, that we think are helpful and are missing um, uh, missing some of the gaps out there, filling some of the gaps out there that are missing uh, good resources. There's lots of good resources out there, but there's always room for somebody to put it in a language that a, that a, group, a certain group will, will really relate to and, and resonate with. So that's what we'd like to do. Um, and so uh, you can be a part of that by contributing and by listening and sharing this podcast and, and uh, certainly giving me your feedback too. You know, if there, if there are things that you guys want to talk about or hear about or, or if you have questions, relationship questions or, or anything like that that you want me to um, take part here on a, on a podcast, I'm happy to, to take a look at those and see if it's something I can handle or not. But um, Anyway, hey, thanks for listening. I hope you have a fabulous day. Stay warm out there. Uh, For all of you people uh, that are living somewhere warmer than a single degree temperature, um, you can suck an egg, okay? You can suck it. I'm getting tired of this. I'm trying to be thankful. I'm trying to be thankful. Because you know what? When the nice days come, I'm going to be very appreciative. All right, everybody. Have a good day.